Uh, I was born and raised in Beijing, uh, particularly in the West City District, Xichengqu. Um, and uh, it was uh, just three, two, three miles west of the Forbidden City. Um, and uh, I, I, now look, looking back, yeah, it's, a, it's a very uh, cultured um, district. Uh, lots of uh, famous uh, artists and painters, um, uh, yeah, opera singers historically for centuries have lived in, in that little area that where I was raised. So, uh, and then I, um, I was put on the music path, um, literally, I think when I maybe turned two years old. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was not my choice. It was uh, really early, yeah. Um, so basically, um, my parents uh, are from the uh, Cultural Revolution generation. They, when they were young, um, they went through uh, more than a whole decade of uh, chaos in China. So, and then when the, the Cultural Revolution uh, stopped, I was born and I was the first generation of uh, one child policy. So, um, um, so I was put on a, a lot of precipitation and hope from my family to, uh, to, to, to achieve, to achieve for my parents' dreams, first of all, probably. <laughs> and then maybe, uh, if I was lucky, my own dream. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, um, so at the, at the time after China was really closed and there was not even much of a, you know instruments or anything to be to be found and manufactured were all stopped so the economy was stopped and there, so uh, uh, but my father he's uh, he's been a musician um, himself and he's very talented so he uh, always wanted me to have a uh, maybe a music life because in China um, musicians if you call, are called musicians is a, a well uh, paid state owned performing troops that's you are never on your own yeah so that's like a, a really a cushion job in china at least in the china that my parents grew up so my father thought that would be a good uh, uh profession future for for me so he had a, a good um friends in the conservatory uh so two professors basically uh when i was about two at a family dinner uh kind of had a secret examination of my music ability. Um, <laughs> and they told my parents that I qualified to become a musician or to be to, to, to be trained, to be taken as a pupil by them. Because uh, in the traditional Chinese uh, uh, music training or art training for centuries, uh, it's not the child's will to, to learn music. You have to be picked. Be chosen by the the gurus, the the, the masters. So uh, it's a huge responsibility because the, there are so many schools or reputations of the music masters. They don't want to easily take on a pupil that may ruin their reputation that's been built for centuries. So uh, so it was a very very carefully chosen process uh, when they chose me. Uh, also, the, the, the determination that I had to see, the determination of my family, if they were also committed to be with me for this path. So it's a whole family that the professors were weighing on your determination. So, uh, so that's how I got into music. <laughs> and, and then it took about two, three years for my parents to find an instrument. Because uh, there's no no stores could even find instruments. It was all in the back uh, storage of an old um, abandoned music manufacturer that they could find an instrument. Uh, so my father thought I would play his instrument, Sanxiao, uh, which is a fretless three string fretless Chinese lute. Um, but I didn't like it, I guess. Uh, so, uh, and then they finally found this giant bujeng from a warehouse, probably. And uh, but I was sitting there because it's so huge. Um, no one really bought it or had the money. Or so my mom kind of begged the the, the manufacturer to have a discount on the price to. So uh, it were, there was like the only thing that she could find. So uh, and then they brought it home. Um, it was like bigger and taller than me. It was a, 
a giant piece of instrument. Uh, so, uh, so I started, um, uh, yeah, and, and the instrument. And luckily, uh, there was a teacher, a professor, uh, agreed to through their friend circle agreed to uh, take me on um, as a as a pupil. Uh, so that's how I started. From when I was five, I started a formal uh, one-on-one -on -one lesson. Um, yeah, so I've been practicing every day uh, and then went through um, instrumental uh, training. And then uh, as a child progresses, um, the, 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 uh, the, the main professor, my main professor spotted more talent and then was convinced that I had bigger potential to go deeper. Uh, so she called her friends who were music uh, ear training and solfege and music theory professors to take me on to start going to the weekend music school in the China Conservatory uh, when I was nine or eight or nine to learn deeper stuff to like basically fully full on preparing me to further like the investment from the teachers I guess like went on bigger and wider to different areas uh, the, the, the professors and then um, and I started going there uh, to do these trainings um, uh, music theory and both traditional Chinese and Western classical because the main textbooks were from Moscow Conservatory and Paris Conservatory is the, the ones that I was studying and being trained on and then uh, and then I was um, recommended by my teachers to join a chamber orchestra Chinese chamber orchestra, because besides being a soloist, because they, they are so experienced as, okay, in case you cannot become a soloist, then you should have this skill as a chamber musician, because it widens your possibility of all, doing all sorts of, uh, and then, and then, and then later I was in the choir, and then, uh, so smaller, bigger, and, uh, and then I was studying percussion as well in orchestra, because the guzheng is like a Western concert harp. You know, in the orchestra, you don't really use it so much, but, but, but the percussion section always needs extra people. <laughs> so when I don't have my parts, I was like, all right, hey, like, we'll play these uh, wooden block. So I learned a lot of percussion because I had uh, so much extra time in the orchestra rehearsals. And uh, so learning that, uh, uh, so basically and throughout my uh, teens, and then, um, and then I was, um, uh, as, the, as further uh, made further, uh, I also joined in competitions every year, every summer, every winter. It was like a full on. The music competitions in in China is a huge industry. <laughs> it's like the most profitable, I would say, industry. M in music is the music competitions since kids' time, and then um, uh, so and then. Winning more all these competitions from filling a bunch, failing so much, and before you know, I could kind of start winning a little bit because just so massively, there's other kids who were so amazingly talented and hardcore. So, and then, um, and then uh, I was recommended by my teachers to uh, uh, take more lessons to get into China Conservatory of Music High School to be a full time prodigy to basically go on that path uh and then so and then uh, in chinese culture like basically parents just take all the advice from the professors and then listening to them so i was just woo and there uh prepared for about a year learning um just uh just intense oh I, I think i was a changed person after that after that round of exams i think i would take on any olympic exams <laughs> uh, it was just massive heartbreaking and massive and uh, lots of pressure and and then since then but once i got into the china conservatory of music uh, high school that's basically all we studied from 16 years old uh, it was all music uh, uh every day like hours that's our job to practice and practice everything from piano training singing quarrel three uh, you know solo with or four people with 40 people and you know different ways and and then until and then college and then at the same time uh, i was really china was opening up uh uh there was lots of uh, international exchange programs that uh, i met uh, students from uh, europe from australia 
primarily yeah at the time yeah from uh, uh, from, uh from the us as well from the uk and then i started to see all sorts of different um mu music contemporary music that was being like uh, taught or introduced to us and collaborating uh, i saw our professors were also going abroad to uh give uh, lectures and uh, elsewhere. So it was a really a big blossoming time of uh, uh, music exchange with other schools from, from all over the globe. Uh, and I was very uh, lucky. And I, I was very interested also in, in language and English, uh, like Abby was interested in, in Chinese. I was, I was like the only kid who spoke fluent English in my whole entire school. So whenever there's uh, international professors or workshops, that needed someone to help with translating, I was the one. Uh, so I got the first hand of the learning experience with uh, the other students and professors from other schools as well. Uh, it, was, it was really, really opened up a lot of uh, uh, doors to me, uh, even from jazz school, from Holland, and uh, just all sorts of uh, uh, music forms that aren't taught uh, in the traditional Chinese music schools. Uh, so that's, uh, and then, and then I opened up my mind and I want to kind of leave to, to go, go outside of China. I know China is a huge country with so much music, so much traditions, but it's still like what's outside of China, uh, it was much more fascinating to me. Uh, so, but, uh, but growing up also as a child, I was also uh, raised in a lot of, like, there's a lot of singing in my household. Uh, singing is a very big culture in Chinese culture. Like, the karaoke, why it's so popular in China is people just can't stop singing, basically. <laughs> they want to sing and well they eat and just so much singing. And uh, uh, so there was, so my parents, I remember if, you know, we had like kind of feisty household, but the only time that we weren't arguing with each other because the three of us were singing operas together. <laughs> <laughs> We're kind of like play this opera, Chinese opera role. Like, oh, mom, you sing this, dad, yeah, you sing this, and then let's. So it was a really fun time um, in my family uh, household. It was when we were just singing. Um, and then uh, I came to the States as an undergraduate. I uh, got a, a, a fantastic music scholarship to uh, University of North Texas Music College, College of Music, and then uh, to study, to continue uh, composition study. Uh, and then that's uh, where I was just boom. Uh, even to see you know marching marching band, see West African ensemble, to see uh, Indian raga singing groups, all even in in the middle of Texas, it was mind blowing. Uh, so uh, I just and I love electronic music, jazz because also UNT has a big jazz school, a big jazz program. Uh, a lot of famous jazz musicians went went to that school, and. Uh, so, uh, but, and then uh, I was drawn to uh, avant, avant jazz, like improvisation, and went to uh, Mills College. So uh, up until that, that, that period in my life, uh, American folk music was not part of my kind of uh, uh, upbringing at all. It was all from traditional Chinese, Western classical, to all these other things. Uh, because I was always in institutions, it was just uh, no, almost no area where I could la actually listen to uh, folk music, American folk music. So when I started uh, listening to American folk music when I was living in Boulder, Colorado, uh, I, I, a live show I went to Chautauqua uh, uh, Auditorium. It was Doc Watson as well. Uh, and I saw him, uh, I, I was blown away. <laughs> and I, I, was, I started hearing all these really beautiful music. Um, and that was almost like the bluegrass music was almost like avant-garde to me because that was just so rare. I had never, I had you no know, perspective in the, my contrast. That was the, the foreign sound where there's the beautiful, that like uh, unfamiliar sound of music. And, uh, so I was drawn to, to uh, wanting to know more. And uh, so it's like, it's so simple, but so deep. Because you know, my background is like complex, really complex. And I, at that time in my career, I, I was um, longing for something 
I was questioning a lot of my my life choice, or I, it wasn't even really much of my choice in music to that point. So I was seeking something that I could just feel relaxed and then to connect without having to analyze, like uncontrollably analyze the sound in my head, which it was pretty much my entire life.